Welcome to my channel. The slides that are rolling by are an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. Once you have watched the video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button and leave a small comment. It's a really a big help to the channel. Uh, the YouTube logarithm, when it sees that, promotes the channel more and will be more viewers. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you for watching. Well, that previous clip was hummingbirds feeding at my hummingbird feeder. It's been very successful. It's a, a new feeder, and for some reason they like it so much better than the old ones. This is just outside of my glass door in my living room, tiny little deck out here. And what we're looking at now is one of the sweet tumbler tomatoes in that planter along with uh, well, the uh, um, parsley that I grew in the hydroponics last winter and there are two chive plants there that have been there since last year. They overwintered quite nicely. I have been picking uh, ripe tomatoes since the last day of June. Not a lot, but I get more than I need. I keep a little bowl full of them. They're a nice size. Um, for a cherry tomato. I mean, they're just a cherry tomato, but they're much larger than the ones that you usually see in stores, anyway. Well, that is what's happening right outside of my door. We have had lots of rain. Yesterday, we had the tail end of uh, tropical cyclone Elsa. We didn't get very much wind here at all, but we got a terrific amount of rain. And prior to that, for the previous two weeks, it didn't rain every day. We had some sunshine, but we had a, a lot more rain than seems to be normal for our summers here now. So I haven't watered the outside garden, outside of the greenhouse. It hasn't needed to be watered in 10 days, maybe two weeks. So let's go out and look around and see a few things out there. I don't know if you can make them out or not, but the Kennebec potatoes are just starting to flower. Blossom buds opening up on well, most of them this morning, I guess, at the very top of them, anyway. I am so impressed with the tops. I'm just hoping that there's actually potatoes down under them. I haven't, uh, they haven't been in that long. There would be small new potatoes, and I'm tempted, but I'm not going to empty one out for a while yet. I'll wait till at least they finish blooming, but heavens, above the pot surface. I think most of those are close to four feet tall. I keep thinking one of these wind things that we get along with the rain will knock them all down, but so far so good. Well, if you remember from my last video, I showed this potting bench. At that time it had seven of the sweet tumblers in those fabric pots on it. Well, I had visit from quite a bit of my family, uh, sister-in-law and uh, several well, two, I guess, a niece and a nephew, and several great nieces and nephews. 
uh, here the other day, and when they left, I gave them each one. Each of the adults got one, so we're down to four on that bench now, which is probably better. It was so crowded, it was difficult for me to keep them watered. I hope I can give you a shot of... Should be able to see a lot of the little ones there. I've been getting ripe ones off of them, but what I'm talking about anyway right now is having them outside in the garden, they're definitely getting pollinated. Uh, there are fewer yellow flowers there, believe it or not, than there were a week or so ago because a lot of them have got pollinated and started to grow little uh, tomatoes. This is one of the beds uh, with uh, winter squash in it, a buttercup type squash. I'm not having any flowers yet. There are lots of blossom buds. Six plants in that bed and six plants over in the other bed. Uh, I think I mentioned that I was giving everything a, a weekly feeding with uh, miracle Grow water-soluble fertilizer. Well, haven't been able to do that for two weeks because the ground has never been dry enough that I would water them. Um, and if you water them with the fertilizer anyway, these heavy rains that we've been having would just wash it right out. So they've been on their own for a couple of weeks and they're still looking quite good. But you wait to the end of the video and I show you what is happening up at the community garden. It is amazing the difference in he here and, and how things are growing up there. Well, my two rows of parsnips have grown so much that they're like one thick row there now, but there is a spacing of seven or eight inches in between there. Carrots are doing similar, but also I can see where there is more dill that needs to be pulled out. I don't know how many thousand seedlings of dill that I've had in the garden this year. After disturbing that soil that used to be in the hoop house and putting it everywhere out in the, out in the gardens, it stirred up a lot of dill seed that had been there for years, I guess, and it's germinating everywhere. Well, I've had one meal off the perpetual spinach which I guess I've said many times before is actually a type of chard, but it's very delicate and very nice and I really enjoyed it. I see some big leaves there with holes in them, slugs or snails. I have slug and snail bait, a organic one made by Safers. And I've got to put some of that out here today, but with all the rain it just it sort of looks like little pieces of soap, whatever it is, it melts away in the rain. Well, I cut the scapes off of my red Russian garlic, and I have been using them, enjoying them more than I did in the past. I usually found them too strong, but I've been using them sparingly in a lot of different things that I've cooked, and I find when they're fully cooked, they're milder than, than the actual garlic clove itself would be, but I have been enjoying them anyway. Some time ago, maybe three weeks ago now, I pulled one and it was just like one single bulb that hadn't even started to divide. Well, this morning I pulled that one, and that's a small head, if I can get a hand in there to show you, but it's several cloves. Watched uh, Southpaw Davies' video this morning, and he has pulled his and got some magnificent heads, but after he cleaned them up, uh, then they started to turn red, so I guess that will happen with that one as well. But anyway, my point being, I'm not going to pull the rest of them yet. They're too small. They're still looking nice and green. Some little brown tips on some of the leaves, but as long as the foliage seems to be looking good, I'll leave them alone and hopefully the bulbs will continue to get larger. But this one here is definitely usable. I'll leave it in the sun somewhere and let it dry. The sun on the screen is so bright, but I think you're looking at the top of the Scarlet Runner Bean uh, teepee. And it did what I thought it would do. They went to the top and then they've gone beyond the top and they're just sort of tangling themselves together and hanging back down there. But what I want to show you is I have got flowers on the things. I will have beans sometime in the near future. I have little things like this all over the plant so they're just starting to bloom. But there's hopes of some scarlet runner beans in the not too distant future. Well, the brassicas are continuing to look very nice. Uh, I think the section at that end is cauliflower, in the middle is cabbage, and on this end is broccoli. 
wonderful leaves. I don't see any broccoli heads or any cauliflower heads starting to form yet. They're still very clean and I have given them uh, I guess three treatments with the BTK so far. After yesterday's torrential rain they'll need another one in the next day or two sometime when it's nice and warm and dry. I will give them another shot of it but the, the leaves are remaining quite clean. Uh, some lower leaves have been eaten up quite a bit and I suspect that's slugs. I don't really see where there's been any cabbage loper damage yet anyway. This is my zucchini patch or noche, a, a, a summer squash. They don't actually call it a zucchini but it looks very much like a green zucchini to me. Now hopefully you can see a lot of flowers down in there. There have been both male and female blossoms and I picked a lot of the female blossoms with the small squash behind them and uh, fried them. I've never done it before. I've been aware of it for years but I've never done it before. I'll insert some photos here to show you what it looked like. Very interesting, very different. Uh, the little zucchini on it tasted like a zucchini and I can't explain what the blossom tasted like. It has its own unique flavor but quite nice. I'm sure it's something I will do again. Well, as I said, it was quite easy to do. I did a little Google search online and found a recipe for the batter, which is very simple to make. Flour, eggs, milk. I think there was a little baking powder in it or something, but quite easy to do. And you don't need to deep fry them. I shallow fried mine in uh, canola oil. I just recently discovered canola oil. Canola uh, means Canadian oil. I never knew that before. Something I read recently. I know we grow thousands of acres of canola here and it is sort of our native oil but canola means Canadian oil. Well I hope you give these a try. They're really quite tasty. This is the area with the gourds it's a mixed variety of gourds, um, variety pack, seed from, from Vessies. And this morning I have blossoms. I've had a few already. I don't know if you can see any of them there or not, but I've had a few blossoms already. So far I think they've all been male. I haven't seen any female flowers. But there are a lot of bees around today, which is wonderful. Uh, I suppose they've been held back in the... Uh, wet weather as well, but good to see a lot of pollinators around. I'm in the greenhouse now, and that is the two uh, plants of an heirloom French variety of melon. Supposedly tastes like cantaloupe, but it looks like a squash, I guess. I've had lots of male blossoms. Oh, ten days ago I saw one female blossom. I'm not quite sure if I was successful in getting it pollinated or not. And this morning there was another female blossom, and I did attempt at least to hand pollinate it. And I noticed that there is a female blossom that the blossom is closing up on, so that must have been out yesterday in that horrible weather. I doubt very much if it got pollinated by anything, because I don't think anything was flying yesterday. Hopefully I'm focused on the right place to show you some of the green chilies on the chili de arbol. I have four plants and all four have got blossoms now. This is the one what we're looking at hopefully is the one that uh, bloomed first and I have actually been using some of the green chilies. They don't seem to be as hot as when they're fully ripe but uh, they're there so I'm using them. I'm getting some decent sized gherkin uh, cucumbers and I have one or two of the long seedless English cucumbers that I've noticed. The gherkins are, well, actually I would that would be an ideal size for making dill pickles, one that we're looking at. And I may I may harvest some for that. I've I've got dill in bloom in here, but I don't see any that I would use yet with the seed heads on. The plants are doing very well, starting to run around a bit. Pleased with the onions, they're starting to bulk up, at least some of them are. And this is what they're supposed to do this time of year. I'm hoping that if it's sunny and hot enough today that the 
bed will dry out enough that I can water it tonight because I would love to give them a, another feed of miracle Grow fertilizer. Well, that is the giant radicchio, the one that recovered after being nibbled right down to the ground. And around it, maybe you can see two or three smaller ones. I threw some extra seed in there, but nothing seems to be bothering it this time. And it looks like it's hitting up in the middle, so I may actually get at least one hit of radicchio out of this. This is the beta uh, grapevine, a slipskin grape similar to Concord. And uh, I'm keeping it pruned back, not letting it grow any terribly long whips, but it's got quite a number of clusters on it. I don't know if you can see some of the leaves that uh, look like they've been hit by a shotgun blast, holes all through. Those are the earlier leaves that come out, and every year they are attacked by flea, beagle, flea beetles in here. Um, only seems to be happening in the early spring and then they disappear thankfully. I had an, another grapevine uh, to the right of this one. It was just a numbered variety. It hadn't even been named yet and anyway I'd had it three or four years. It was doing pretty good. Died last winter and last winter was one of the mildest winters we've had. I didn't explore down below to see what might have happened. I suspect voles ate the roots off of it like they did a lot of other things in here. Well, I think that probably finishes for around here. We'll take a little look up at the community garden before we shut this down. Just arrived at the community garden. Come in through the gate. I can't show you the secret combination. <laughs> the gate has like a bicycle lock on it. Not that we're worried about anybody coming in to vandalize the gardens or anything. But this area at the front of the uh, lodge here, the, um, it has a fence all the way around it. Several of the uh, residents elderly and have dementia, of course, and they don't want them to be able to get out through the gate and wander away, I guess, is the main problem. So we have a bicycle lock, and everybody that is at the community garden knows what the combination is. Lovely. The beds are really looking great after the the rain that we have had for the last 10 days, two weeks or so. But this is mine. <laughs> it was two uh, gourds, two of the things that I'm calling a zucchini, the noche summer squash, and two of the winter squash. And as you can see, it is almost full of potatoes, which I did not plant. Planted them last year. Grew potatoes in here. And uh, these are all volunteers that have come up. I haven't taken any of them out. I don't think they're going to bother the squash or the um, gourd plants at all. The larger squash plants are starting to run, putting out runners, so they will be outside of the bed pretty soon. And the uh, zucchini-type plants are, are producing nicely. You can see down in there, I guess, is one small one. The blossom is closed, so it must have been in bloom yesterday and the same down in, in this one. Not seeing any blossoms on the uh, winter squash or the, the uh, gourds yet. I think this end is the gourds. And they're really starting to come out over the edge. I see little blossom buds everywhere, but I haven't seen anything that's bloomed out on them yet. And I think these two along here are the winter squash which are supposed to be semi-vining. And I can see down in here where this one has just started to put out a bit of a vine. They're not supposed to be vining as much as the other varieties. And I said there weren't any blossoms. And there is a female blossom right there. Unfortunately, if it's going to get pollinated, it will get pollinated from one of the uh, Zucchini, I guess, are all squash, so that might work if a, a bee goes from one to the other. I determined that I am not going to do any hand pollinating up here. I just want to see what the difference is. Down at the my own garden at the house, I hand pollinate every chance I get to make sure I get as many squash as possible. Just going to let nature take its course up here. I know the lodge has had lots of strawberries off of their patch, and there is still more coming. 
My first flush of them is pretty much over with at the house. I find one or two a day and they will soon start a second flush. They're the um, ever-bearing type varieties. But up here, of course, they're not in a greenhouse, so they're a bit behind mine, but boy, they look good. It is a beautiful day after the storm, though. I think it was 23 degrees when I left home. There's a little bit of a breeze here, but not much. This is the garden looking back at it from the other angle. All the plots are looking very good. A lot of good produce being grown here. Well, I'm just, I have Angel with me. She's in my truck. I can't, I can't bring her inside of the fenced in area here. She wouldn't do anything mischievous, but uh, they have a little sign that says, no dogs, please. And not wanting to have to clean up after them, I think is what's going to happen there. So but at any rate, Angel and I are headed out to the other side of the island, to the coast where she goes for her swim. She loves to swim in the ocean. And it's about an hour to high tide, so the water is way up. I'll take a clip of Angel swimming to close this video off. As soon as we get here, she gathers up sticks on the beach for me to throw in the water for her. I love the cool breeze out here on the coast, anyway. She brought it back with some rockweed. <laughs> this is Southern Head Beach. I guess that is Southern Head, the point of land there. And around the other end is Herring Cove Provincial Park, where I different times have filmed the surf rolling in on the sand beach. We walk around the point here, this is Raccoon Beach, and then the length of Raccoon Beach. There's a long flight of stairs that go up to an area where there are covered picnic tables and that sort of thing. And go up there. I usually read for a while up there and then we walk back on the little roads and trails to where I've parked the truck here. It's all to go over here about two hours, I guess, usually. The girl has had her first swim anyway. Well, thank you very much for watching.